Hey guys, it's Cavs, and welcome to a game called Midnight Evil on the Switch. Um, yeah, it, it it's got gremlin it's got gremlins in it, so I'm curious how it's gonna go. In fact, I'll actually turn my camera on for this one. <laughs> Alright, let's get into it. As the clock approached midnight, William Crinkle was fast asleep. Okay, I'm sleeping in my bed. The night was different though. He woke to a strange sound coming from the attic. Yeah, that's a little creepy. <laughs> As he climbed the stairs, he felt something. He had never seen this chest before. Ooh. It's where all the gremlins are hiding. Just an innocent book. Tonight his life would change forever. Nathan Sanders presents Midnight Evil. Is this based off of the Gremlins movie? I didn't actually read into it, but I know there's like Gremlins that pop up. And I know Gremlins turned evil at midnight if you fed them. So I wonder if it's kind of based off of that. If you've ever seen the Gremlins movie, that is. Oh, I can look around. Oh. Long Hold on. Long before the first humans stood upright and took their place in the world, there was a beautiful land that was ruled by what many would come to call the Fae. These ancient beings were worshipped by mankind, but they were also feared. Humans were right to be afraid, for there were many different creatures that lived in the darkness watching, waiting. Most were harmless enough, amusing themselves by causing mischief and playing pranks on humans that crossed their paths. However, some had more... Okay, that was kind of creepy. Can I actually get out of the bed? I don't, I don't know if I can actually, I can't get out of the bed. No. However, some, however, some had more sinister intentions. The Erkling, for example, have developed a liking for the taste of human children. These monsters are small, unnaturally fast, and impossible to kill. It was an unlucky tragedy for my people that we decided to build our village here right in the middle of the Earthlings' territory. We have lost so many of our children over this past year. There aren't enough tears in this world to weep for their loss. Um... Can I actually interact with anything? I don't think, I, I can't go any farther than this. Okay, so we built our village on the Earthling. Is that door open a little bit? 
Interesting. Thankfully, though, my grandmother taught me well in the ways of my Druid ancestors. I may not be able to kill the little beast, but I was able to work out a spell that binds them to this book. I can only hide it and pray that it never falls into the hands of a child. So if you are reading this, know that I'm truly sorry for the demons that have now been passed on to you. Opening the book will have awakened them, and I'm sure they will be ravenously hungry. Once the book is opened, you must read it out loud from beginning to end in order to return them to their magical children. Be watchful. They only attack if you don't see them coming. Most importantly, once you finish this book, keep it hidden so that no one ever opens it again. WIGSFM 98.7 Game Talk. Hello, darkness. My name is Nick Gloom. It's just me tonight. As you guys know, we answer game questions and talk tips and tricks. Well, Nate usually does. I don't really play most of those games. Anyway, let's get to the phones. First caller, you're on the air. Hi, Nick. I'm wondering, how do I beat the final boss in Germinator Destruction? How would I know that? Well, I don't know. I'm stuck here working for crap money. I still can't afford to buy new Atari games. Would you like me to page Nate? I don't Here's know. the thing. Like I said, I'm working here. I don't usually come on the radio. So, I don't have as much of a bedside manner as Nate does. But it's totally fine. I bought Am a I new Nate? basic book. Uh, which is the programming language for Otori, since I can't afford to buy my own Otori games, and I'm working on my own homebrew game. The pending title is Evil Midnight, where I'm not sure what you're going to have to do yet, but I think it's going to be a horror game, and it's going to be at nighttime, and it's going to be evil. Oh my god. Basically, you would do something all night, and then you would win. It's kind of like working here. I try to keep my head down all night, but Janet asked me to go on the air. And I'm always getting asked to do stuff. The more stuff I get asked to do, the more I get anxious and panic. It's a vicious cycle. Is this some kind of life lesson? I just want to play Germinator. <laughs> Here's the thing. I just want to play Germinator. Okay. So, can I actually get out? Of the so did I did I read oh chapter one little Maggie O'Brien was the first the children had been playing in hope get the fuck away can I click on that that was creepy This reminds me of that one little one game that I think it was Markiplier that played it and Jack Sky. They had to um it was a baby bedroom and they had to make sure they didn't get attacked and they had to flash their light on the creature, otherwise it would attack them. This is kind of similar to that. The children, the children had been playing in Hogan Forest when they all heard a noise. Sensing. I heard a noise. My own heartbeat. Sensing no danger because there were so many of them, twelve children in all decided to investigate the source of the strange sound. As they all searched high and low, they soon realized that Maggie was missing. Frantically, just keep reading. Frantically, they began searching for their friend. She was a small girl who loved to play hide and seek. Her big. Oh 
I want to close the window back up. Why can't I close it? Her big brother Colin insisted that she was probably hiding somewhere safe and giggling to herself as she watched everyone search for her. The sun sank low and the sky and the forest were dark. The children, frustrated and panicked, ran back to the village to alert their parents that little Maggie was nowhere to be found. That's when everyone lit torches and spread out through the woods, calling her name. So far, just one. So far, just one showed up. The little girl's mother sobbed desperately as we all inspected every corner of those woods in hopes of finding her. Her brother kept searching. Okay, was that one of the drawers? Her brother kept searching, tears streaming down his cheeks. I'm her big brother! said, rubbing his eyes. Did some of the stars go missing? Wasn't there more? Oh my goodness. I'm supposed to make sure nothing happens to her. It's not your not your fault, Colin, I assured him. We'll find her soon, and she'll be no worse for the wear. He nodded, forced a smile, and we all continued looking. The moment I heard him scream, I knew he had found her. Rather, what was left of her, which wasn't much. We were sure it was Maggie because she had worn her favorite hair bow that day. Her father plucked a pink. Her, her father plucked a pink ribbon from the body and fell to his knees, wailing into the darkness. Poor Colin tried to tell us then. He said that she had been covered in what he described as little green men. Little green men, huh? They're, they're fat and green? He stammered. There's blood going off. They're buying off. Get the fuck away! What? I saw him though! Alright, I'm gonna stop it there for now. And I'll do this one again, for sure. But what the heck? <laughs> what the heck? It's definitely an interesting game, though. So, I hope you enjoyed it, and I will catch you guys next time. Goodbye!